directly from 42nd Street in Midtown Manhattan, New York. I am your host Harbin and you are watching my channel YOLO, you only live once. Welcome to the new video. Uh, today we are going to discuss a collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and how you should avoid something like this in retirement. Let's first discuss what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank uh, is a specialized bank catering to venture capitalists and uh, startups in the area of technology, health and medical sciences. So majority of their depositors were uh, high deposits. That means uh, having deposit greater than $250,000. So now in that scenario, uh, in 2021 and 2020, a lot of VCs basically funded a lot of startups uh, and a lot of money flow flew into Silicon Valley Bank. Now they were actually having a lot of assets, uh, greater than $200 billion. So now what they did that in that environment, it was a low interest rate environment. As you remember, if you look at my video of how I created a treasure, uh, a treasury bond ladder in 2021, after I sold my stocks, uh, I specifically told at that time that in that video, that the interest rate is very low and there's no point basically investing for a long term bonds and it was very clear at that time that over the next two to three years that uh, Fed will be raising funds uh, at interest rate. If you look at that video I'll put up a link it was very clear I said that okay I'm investing in uh, 6, 12, 18 and 24 bonds uh, ladder uh, treasury bonds ladder so that like every six month I have uh, money to reinvest and if the interest rates are good I can actually invest for a longer term and then as the my first uh, CD was mature uh, the first treasury bond was matured in uh, March of 2022 the interest rate had already gone to basically two to three percent and then even then I thought like okay this is still going to go up. Inflation is basically high. Fed is indicating they are basically aggressively going to increase the rate up to 5%. So I actually reinvested those for two to five years uh, treasury bond uh, instead of basically a longer term um, bonds. But then when it comes to October of 2022, the interest rate actually exceeded 4% and that time I was basically uh, sure that okay I want my portfolio to return at least 4% and if I am getting an opportunity to uh, stash some cash for a longer term for 4% I am fine with that. So I at that time actually I actually picked up a couple of securities which are about 10 years uh, 10 to 20 years and I stacked that treasury ladder during that time frame and then um, it came to March and I invested some more money in the bonds I actually reinvested uh, uh, for again 7 to 10 years because the interest rates were high the point was that okay when the interest rates were low I never invested more than a, a two years in any time because I wanted to, and in that also, I actually invested six, 12, 18, and 24 months so that I will have the opportunity to reinvest the treasury bonds. That was a mistake which SVB did. They actually had longer term treasuries in a low interest environment in 2021, and that when people started withdrawing, came knocking, and that's that's a bank, okay? They should not actually do that. They have to have maintain a liquidation 
requirement which they didn't have and when people started withdrawing on Thursday they actually withdraw 42 billion in just one day and that's such a huge withdrawal which basically could not be sustained by the bank and they actually had to uh, uh, call and or the regulators stepped in and they basically closed down the bank because they didn't want more damage happen to the bank. Now can this happen to a person in uh, retirement because it's scary. If you think of it, if something like this happened to a person in retirement then you have a problem. See, even though their interest rates were high, uh, okay, it's a 4%. Uh, I will not invest all my money in a 30 year bond. Uh, because even though I'll be getting 4% for say for the 30 years or okay and my portfolio if I say that uh, my need is 100,000 okay and I have a 3 million portfolio okay I can actually just put 3 million in a 30 year bond today and get a 4% return if I get a 4% return I'll actually get 120,000 every year and that should basically uh, fulfill my requirement for the next 30 years but that's not the case okay the point is that if uh, inflation remain increasing and you don't have any other as asset then what will happen that okay five years from now the 120,000 will not be sufficient for you because the value of that 120,000 has gone down. Even if you want to maintain your same quality of life, and then you will need 150,000. Now there is no way for you to get 150,000 and the bond which was giving you 4%, if the interest rate has gone to 8%, you will have to sell that bond at a discount in order to raise that gap of 30,000 between 120 and 150,000 that you need. The other thing is that in case you hit in an emergency and then you have to actually cash out more than what you want to spend, you have to basically sell the bond at a discount. So that's why like uh, even though the interest rates are high, I will not invest all my money in one 30 year bond. Instead, I'll actually ladder it. So by laddering, what you do is basically you're saying, if I my need is 100,000, okay, I first I need to keep around 200,000 in a cash account. So that means checking, savings, high yield savings. So that like, okay, I'll be able to go through my uh, annual expenses and on top of it if I actually has any emergency or anything I should be able to still without disturbing my uh, bonds or my uh, stocks or mutual fund I should be able to survive. Similarly I should have eight times uh, into short term bonds two to four years or five years because I would like them to be matured every year, two to seven years or five years, so that every year I'm getting that 100,000 matured, and which will basically be giving me the funds for my expenditures. Then I should have bonds for longer term. So 8x the time I'll actually invest in seven to 20 years so that actually I have in the high interest rate environment, I have locked in that interest for that many years. So I will be comfortably be able to still take out the money that I need without actually disturbing uh, the, my portfolio. And then I'll have the money, 40% of my portfolio in stocks and mutual fund, which I won't have to basically touch for a considerable number of years and I basically monitor it and whenever the time is right, I convert that money into my uh, bonds or longer term bonds or a shorter term bond depending on where 
I am. And that's how I actually circulate. Uh, but stashing all 3 million and 30 year bond, even if the interest rate is above 4%, will not make sense because the value of money can go down if interest rates actually or inflation creeped in and then interest rate went up. So you should always be basically laddering and that's very important. And that's what not the case with Silicon Valley Bank. And Silicon Valley Bank being a commercialized bank need to keep liquidation uh, like okay, 40 to 60 percent of their uh, asset should be high liquid state so that they can actually anytime uh, fulfill the withdrawal requirement from the deposit. I hope uh, this gives you actually a good uh, reason for diversification. Now you have to basically again uh, identify how to avoid uh, suffering uh, as a result of such collapse. So a lot, lot of the people like 80-90% of the uh, customers who were banking with Silicon Valley Bank had uh, amount greater than 250,000 because they are startup companies. They actually use their uh, SVB for payrolls. Uh, they had uh, the funding intact in that bank, uh, which was basically anywhere from uh, 1 million to uh, multiple millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, and uh, that's something uh, you should avoid as a person uh, in retirement. Uh, so if you look at it, FDIC insure, insurance insure only up to 250,000 in any bank. If you are a single account holder and if you are joint account holder, that will be 500,000. So make sure that you should not actually have more than 500,000 in a joint account and more than 250,000 in the single account in any bank. Okay, there are four national top banks and there are a lot of regional banks uh, which are FDIC insured so you basically should diversify and put money across it if you have to at least stash cash uh, at a large level. Then don't keep more than 500,000 in single brokerage account. Even if you are buying treasury bonds in a brokerage account, don't basically have more than 500,000 in a single brokerage account. Uh, the SPIC insurance basically only going to replace your securities with corresponding securities, okay? So if you are actually having uh, buying bonds directly with Treasury but Direct, you can actually have million dollar or two million dollar. It doesn't matter because that's actually a secured securities. It's just that, okay, if the brokerage firm goes down, then somebody has to replace that security and then that security will be replaced up to 500,000 under that SPIC insurance. So it's better to actually diversify risk by having in multiple banks and multiple brokerage accounts. Then also uh, reduce the risk of basically bank collapsing by having the uh, uh, accounts in both top national bank as well as regional bank. If you want to take the facilities of the regional banks, uh, because you don't like the attitude of the top national banks, uh, you should basically still diversify and have accounts in top national banks so that in such a situation, you should be able to readily able to move the money around. I hope uh, uh, this gives you enough information how to avoid certain situations uh, when you run into and how to basically prepare yourself in retirement and prior to retirement by diversifying your accounts across multiple banks and multiple brokerage firms. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channels and like my video and leave a comment. Have a great day.